Okay, hi everyone. So let's talk now about developmental designs. So developmental psychology is of course uh, a big field and it kind of overlaps with really all the other fields. So you might look at uh, mental health and clinical stuff in developmental psychology. You might look at cognitive development, social development, uh, neural development, so on and so forth. But the, the methodology can be tricky when it comes to developmental designs because there's not a whole lot we can manipulate. Well, actually we can't. We, we can manipulate things, but we definitely can't manipulate age. So whatever kind of developmental design I'm running, whether it's cross-sectional, longitudinal, sequential, which we'll get into each of those, all these things are going to be quasi-experiments, okay? not actual experiments. Because can we manipulate age? No, we can't manipulate age, right? Age is something, a pre-existing factor or condition or trait or quality that we have to divide people up by, but we can't actually change ourselves. okay? When it comes to developmental designs, can't really say there's causation going on. Um, we can only say there's association. Now, each of these designs has their pros and cons, um, as we'll see. Um, and as always, it just depends on, on your research question and what's worth doing and what's not worth doing. So like I said, developmental psychology is concerned with psychological changes across the lifespan, either with uh, children, toddlers, babies, um, teenagers, young adults, middle adults, older adults. Um, generally age is the main variable we're interested in. So again, though we can't manipulate age, right? We have to rely on an existing age or wait for age to change on its own, we can't, we don't have the technology to change someone's age, right? Um, and just to clarify, there might be other variables you manipulate, but kind of in addition to age, you might look at age and then have some independent variable that you manipulate, but again, age is not something you can manipulate. Now, when it comes to age, there's actually a within subjects way to look at stuff and a between subjects way. I don't compare, don't confuse that with there being a manipulation, but there is a way we can look at changes in age correlationally, either within subjects or between subjects. Okay. Hopefully you remember within subjects means that the same people are doing the same, are doing multiple conditions. And between subjects means different people are doing different conditions, okay? So the same is going to apply with age, only it's not so much conditions, it's just different ages, and it's not, again, not something we can manipulate. So we can look at the same person at multiple ages, or we can look at different people with different ages, okay? And we'll see what that looks like. For example, if you're interested in language development in two, four, and six-year-olds' language skills, well, there's a couple ways you can do this. Um, one way is known as a longitudinal design, and one way is known as a cross-sectional design. Okay. A longitudinal design is the within subjects version. And all it means is that you're going to compare the same people um, at multiple ages, okay? So you might, um, you might get, you know, a bunch of people born in 2004, wait till they're two, um, test them, wait two years, test them again, wait another two years, test them again, okay? And that would be analyzed like a within subjects comparison not that we really covered that, but um, if you were doing that, that's how you would analyze it. Because again, it's the same person or same people rather doing multiple 
repeating the study in multiple age, age, um, ages. Okay. On the other hand, you can also do a between subjects version, again, not manipulating age, but letting age be what it is, but you can compare different people with different ages. So rather than testing the same group of people and waiting two years each time, you can instead just grab, say, one person from 2004, one person, or sorry, someone who was born in 2004, and thus would be two if you tested them here. Um, the slides are a bit outdated, but um, grab another person that was, say, born in 2002, making them four, or, and then grab someone who's born in 2000, making them six. So again, just grabbing, not grabbing, but recruiting people um, of different ages, and they all would get tested within the same time, time frame rather than waiting for them to actually age. Okay, that's a cross-sectional design. And again, longitudinal design is kind of like a within subjects comparison, because again, you're testing the same people multiple times at different ages. And then a cross-sectional design is like a between subjects comparison, because you're testing different people of different ages. Um, they both have their pros and cons, as we're going to see, and it all just comes back to the nature of your research and what you, what you suspect will be a confound versus not, and that's kind of how you decide. Though there is one other way that we'll talk about, um, but it has cons. So just that, again to clarify, um, this is what a uh, longitudinal design looks like. So you just, you test Harry year one, two, three, four, five, right, repeatedly. That's um, longitudinal, cross-sectional. You're just going to grab different people from different age groups and test them all at the same time. Okay. Now, something to consider, of course, is how this is going to affect stability. Right. So, if you remember back to a while ago when we talked about within subjects designs, we talked about how if you can, if a within subjects design is feasible. If there aren't problems with people, say, figuring out the manipulation, or the manipulation is hard, the manipulation is maybe hard to figure out, or um, you don't care if they know the manipulation or not. Within subjects, designs are desirable because they cut down on extraneous variables, right? The fact that you're, well, as a reminder, let's say you're testing um, cell phones and driving. So you test the same person with a cell phone and a driving simulator and then without a cell phone in the driving simulator. Well, um, you don't really have to think so much about their individual driving ability, their driving ability, because it's the same. You don't have to worry about baseline driving ability being a factor there because the same person is doing the same condition. Sorry, the same person is doing multiple conditions, right? Compared to if you had some people do cell phones with dri driving with cell phones, and then some people do driving without cell phones, you know, um, driving ability is an extraneous variable there. So the same, of course, applies that within subjects versus between subjects difference to the longitudinal versus cross-sectional ideas. If you can examine the same people multiple times, um, you're gonna seriously cut down on any individual differences, any extraneous variables, right? Whereas comparing different people from different times, you're gonna, you know, gonna have to worry about that more. Now, with that in mind, um, a big con of, of course, of doing a, of doing a uh, longitudinal design is it takes a long time, right? So if we have to test Harry like seven different times, I mean, that's, that's a real pain, right? You have to wait seven years to do one, one study that's, hopefully you have tenure, right? Whereas doing this is gonna be, doing a cross-sectional design is a lot quicker. Okay, so when we do go the between subject route, so we use the um, cross-sectional design, and we test different people from different age groups, we usually split them up into what's known as cohorts, okay? This is just, basically the different age groups we wanna make comparisons between. 
Okay. So cohorts can be individually birth years or several birth years grouped together. It just depends on your question. So for example, if I was looking at, I wanted to compare two, two year olds to four year, four year olds to six year olds, then I'd be using individual birth years. Um, in contrast, I might want to look at something like more of a range of years. So I might say compare people that are in their 40s to people in their 60s to people in their 80s. So it's not as um, it's not as narrow the way you group people. Um, what wh how you set up your cohorts is all just going to depend, as always, on your research question. Okay, um, though it does have. It often does have a lot to do with younger, whether you're looking at um, earlier stages of development versus later stages of development. So, for example, um, when you look at like say two to six year olds, there's a lot of changes cognitively that happen during those years, right? Like a two year old is going to be probably very different from a six year old, whereas say a 40 year old is not going to be very different from a 46 year old for about 44 year old or a 46 year old, right? With say kind of development that happens in like late adulthood, the changes are much more gradual. So you might expect a difference between, you know, anywhere, people in their forties compared to their eighties, but a single year or a couple of years or four years is not a big deal. So that's why you're gonna potentially just group them by say, you know, again, forties, sixties, eighties, Kind of more of a range because development is much changes in development are much slower than the later years compared to the earlier years. Okay. All right. So cross sectional designs are probably more common than longitudinal designs. And like we mentioned, it lets you collect data in a much shorter period of time. All right. So again, if you can just recruit people from different people to, to, to satisfy each age group, well, that's obviously faster than retesting the same people over like a span of 10 years, okay? By the way, that's, again, that also kind of relates back to what we talked about here. Um, if you're running a developmental study, you might go with a longitudinal design when you're dealing with a, a shorter time frame. So if you're expecting substantial development to occur in like a year or two, like you might be with, um, young children, well, maybe then it's it's worth, you know, since you're only waiting like a year or two, maybe then it might be worth just running it longitudinally. Whereas when you're talking about changes you expect over like a decade or two, um, so something like something in older adulthood, well, then you probably don't want to wait 10 or 20 years, right? And then you probably want to go with a, a cross-sectional design. Um, now, the, the issue, of course, with cross-sectional designs is that you get cohort effects. Remember, cohorts are kind of the groups or the ages you divide people into, but kind of thinking back to what we've talked about, it's not a, it's not a clean, it's, well, it's not something you can manipulate, and there are confounds that come with that. Not just extraneous variables, but confounds things that are gonna systematically vary with your comparison. So if you were to compare 80-year-olds um, to 60-year-olds to 40-year-olds, this would be, again, these are a bit outdated, but um, this would be kind of the age range we're talking about. So 80-year-olds would have been born in the 20s, 60-year-olds, again, I know it's outdated, but just roll with me here. 60-year-olds uh, would have been born in the 40s, uh, 40 year olds would have been born in the 60s. Well, the problem becomes, again, cohort effects. We don't know what's, what's also gonna vary with age here. Let's think about that for a second. I mean, age is our variable that we're interested in, but what else is gonna vary along with age? A lot of things, right? A lot of things could vary with the time you were born. Um, I'll stop the video here. I'll let you, I'll post these two so you can watch those and get an idea of what I'm talking about.
Or actually, I'll just post the one. Okay.